No, it's just natural. <laughs> What'd you do? Just wave. Oh, okay. I thought you were taunting uh, oh. Iowa, Iowa for the matchup later today. Oh, yeah. We definitely want to beat you. We're guys. friends for now, but we definitely a couple beat hours. You guys. We got a couple hours. <laughs> so, uh, extremely excited to uh, be here today. Um, you know, it's a very underrated uh, moment when you sign, organization signs an extension to player that they drafted, um, brought up, developed. Um, sometimes you tend to celebrate the guy that you sign in a free agency from another lure from another team a little bit more. But in this case, I think we're more excited because it shows that not only do we want them back um, because we feel like they're great players that are going to help us win another championship, but they also wanted to be here. And in the case of Anthony and Jamel, I know that they had a lot of opportunities. So did Levante. Um, but a second contract is awesome. In terms of Levante, a fourth contract, but that's a whole other story, <laughs> which is awesome. But um, these guys epitomize what we look for, not just on the field, but off the field. So very excited. We're all excited about these guys. And uh, I'm going to turn it over to Jamel and Anthony. First off, don't make a scene. It's just Dean. But I appreciate you, Jason, because <laughs> I honestly didn't want to leave, man. I'm a, I'm a born, born and raised in Florida. I'm close to home. I'm comfortable. So I was like, why would I leave? <laughs> Wish I would have known that a couple times. <laughs> <laughs> Poker face. <laughs> yeah, we ran into each other Saturday night at Eulalie. He, he had his uh, poker face on. Let's yeah. just put it that way. Help me hostage. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, Tampa's been great. Great to my family. Um, you know, got a lot of opportunities here. and. Excited for another one, man. We got a lot of work to do, and uh, we got a lot more to prove. So, uh, me personally, and and uh, as an organization, so I felt like it was a good fit for me. Jamel, like when you were coming into the draft, I remember there was all this talk about like your knees and things like that. Um, just what's it mean to you to, to be able to get to the second contract and, and to do so with with great help? You know, I feel like I beat the odds. I mean, honestly, I don't know why my knees was an issue. Because I went to two, I went like two seasons of college without my knees being a problem, and then when I ran the four three zero at the combine, I was like, that should eliminate the knee, <laughs> the knee situation. So you know, just being able to overcome all the adversity, it's a great feeling to get a second contract. Because I wasn't, I mean, sometimes a little bit, of, there was a little bit of doubt, like how long my knees gonna hold up, gonna hold up, but they did. They still got a couple more years in them. <laughs> We're hoping four more years. Though. What's been keeping you so healthy for you throughout your pro career? Uh, you know, just continue just rehab and just actually like focus on like muscles that 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 focus on muscles that actually stabilize my knee so it won't like bother me, and then just really just staying up on my body. No, you knew you wanted to be back, and, and I think you knew the Bucks wanted you back, but just the nature of this offseason where it was kind of a limited salary cap situation, were you worried that that they couldn't make an offer that would, would keep you here? Yeah, I was a little worried. I was like, yeah, and like I, I would hate to have to go up north because, man, <laughs> I don't like the cold really. But you know, they started making an adjustment. And I was just like, okay, there's a chance. And then Carson called me. And Carson called me. Was like, yo, they really want you. And I was like, whoo, okay. So they started started leaning towards leaning towards my favor now. So then you know, the stains worked out, and I'm happy to be here. Jamel, how important was it for you to reunite with Carlton and get that dynamic duo back at corner and Antoine at safety as well? You know, it's a great feeling because me and Carlton, we've been following each other since high school. So we was, we was both on the – it was crazy. In the All-American game in, uh, in California, he was actually my roommate. And then, you know, we fought then. You know, we went our separate ways in college. I went to Ohio State. He was committed to Ohio State too, but I just early enrolled. And then things didn't work out there. We both ended up at Auburn together alongside. And then he left early He left early to go to the draft. I tried to get him to stay another year, but he didn't want to do it. And then once he got to the Bucks, I was, like, I was excited for him. And the next year, I get a phone call from Jason. I was like, what, I'm reuniting with Carson again? And then we got I was just like, well, we just can't get away from each other, can we? So, you know, I just feel like we, me and him, we have that great bond. And, like, we know how to, like, work, work together with each other. So uh, it's going to be exciting. Jamal, for, for so many years, the free agents that came here for the last three years, the guys that stayed here, 
part of that was like the chance to win a championship with Bree. You guys are making a decision to stay here without him and, and still trying to continue that success. How important was it to be a part of that, hey, I'm going to stay here, this team can still win even though Brady's gone? Well, you know, for me, I just feel like I want to take that next step in like being a vet and like developing the younger guys because I see how much I've grown. And then I see like potentials in like the younger guys that's uh, when I was in a similar position as them. So they just need, need they just need a true vet. Cause I feel like that's why I didn't have like in my first couple years, I didn't have a vet until my third year when we brought in Richard Sherman. So that really like I see that that really helped elevate my game. So I like I want to do the same thing that Richard Sherman did for me. Anthony, you had uh, five and a half sacks last year. That was uh, second most on the team, most among outside linebackers. Though you got to start a lot down the stretch, especially after Shaq got hurt. Uh, how much do you think that helped you develop and, and kind of progress in your game this season to get you that next contract? Yeah, I mean, being able to get some more opportunities definitely helps. Um, I mean, it's a lot of work, though, throughout the four years. Um, but it was nice to be able to show it, uh, be able to produce, be able to help us win some games, uh, win a division. So, I mean, it's just awesome to be able to, to be a part of something like that. And that's a big reason why I came back. You replicated your sack numbers from last year, but this year you, you added the takeaways, right? The, the three uh, overall yep. Just What was key for you being able to take that next step in, in your, your growth? I think it was, like you said, it's just a little growth and mindset of, you know, we're out there to stop them, uh, stop them and get it back, but we can just take it away, make it a lot easier for ourselves. Um, and then just, you know, being able to get more opportunities, being more comfortable out there. Uh, it was just, you know, playing more aggressively and, and, and going out there to make more plays. And, and how for you, um, when you have a very rare like, body length, you're a very tall, long guy, just how does that help you when it comes to getting those takeaways? Does it give you an extra edge there? Yeah, hundred percent. You got to use what you got, and uh, I got long arms and a tall body, so uh, it's definitely something I can, uh, you know, reach the ball from different angles and, and attack it uh, that way. Especially coming around the edge uh, with sack opportunities, but um, really, it's a mindset thing. It's just you know taking the ball and doing whatever you can. Have you gotten a chance to meet George Edwards yet? And if so, uh, what do you think of him? Uh, I have not, but uh, I'm sure I will right after this, and uh, I'm excited. Um, and I, I, I know he's, uh, he's going to be a great coach, and it's going to be great to have him in the room. Um, and, you know, I can't wait to get to work with him. Okay, you, you played three games, or I think you played every defensive snap. Um, Plus not, special teams. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. Warrior. Uh, so that, I mean, that's typically not the way it goes. Yeah. Um, but for you, how, how did that work out? And in, in a weird way, did, were you okay to be out there? And just, you know, <laughs> well, it depends when you ask me that question. Um, but... <laughs> Yeah, I mean, being out there that much is not normal. Um, but that's the situation we were in. And, you know, we're out there to win games. And if, if that's what it takes, then that's what it takes. And, and that's kind of my mindset is whatever we can do to win the game. But, um, yeah, it was unique. And uh, it took a lot of extra work taking care of my body, uh, eating, sleeping, and like, getting a bunch of treatment. But um, it was nice to be able to do that and, and know, like, how I've been taking care of my body and how I've been developing myself that, it paid off and that I can I can go out there a bunch of snaps and, and still produce so Jamel, can you just kind of take us through the, the journey that you've been on I mean you, you talked a little bit about um, your, your first start where all of a sudden when pregame warm-ups you find out oh my gosh I'm gonna be starting because Carlton got hurt and, and just the growth that you've had what it's taken um, to be able to take your game to where it is now in, in that period of time yeah so rookie year I had my had, had the first humbling experience in the league the whole you know, I didn't. I, I used to hear the saying, "Prepare like you're going to play," because you may never know when your name is going to be called. You know, I really didn't believe that until it actually happened. So I was, that was like a humbling experience for me. So I was just like, man, I had one opportunity in there, and this is what I, and this is how I performed. And then so I like, hopefully, if I, so ever since that moment, that's when I started going up to bowls and told them like, teach me the game of football. So whenever my next opportunity comes. I made the most of it, and then it happened. The opportunity actually happened the next game when we played the Cardinals. And then I had, like, I went from having my worst game to my best game in a two-game span. So that was, like, so I seen, like, my potential. So then I just tried to, like, just build it on the each year and then get smarter. Then my third, and then my last year, that's when I, like, really, like, honed in on, like, I want to be, I want to know the game like Bowles so I could play faster. And then so I came in, like, I've been here since phase one. And then I did all did every OTAs, and then just still just kept studying. So when time of training camp, I just play fast. And when the season starts, I start off on the high note. Well, you had a lot of reasons to come back. How big a part in wanting to stay here was was both in your head coach, somebody that's that's kind of worked with you since you've been in the league. 
we you know it, it was really big because it's like me and him we put in a lot of work together so it's like why would i let another coach reap the benefits of what me and bows did <laughs> so so like that was like that was like really like big because i only want to be coached by bows because he the one that taught me everything i know Uh, so, so like I, you know, I had two, I had two AC, two uh, knee surgeries going into going into my first semester of college, and then, you know, I, I felt healthy, and then when I got to Auburn, I had to sit out for a year. I had to sit out for a year, so that's one season because of the redshirt redshirt rule, and then everything's going good. I was projected to be the starter going into our first game, our first game against Clemson, and then two weeks before the first game, told my other ACL. So. I hit like probably like one of my lowest points in life. When I'm just sitting here like, man, is football really for me? But you know, I had a lot of people in my corner just like, you didn't come this far just to quit and all this. So I just like, well, I did go through this ACL rehab experience before, so I'll do it again. And then, you know, I'm glad I didn't, I'm glad I didn't quit because not everything paid off. I proved Ohio, Ohio State wrong when they told me I had a 3% chance of being successful in football. So I took the, took the gamble and then it paid off. From an emotional standpoint, though, it helps to talk to people when you're in that state, right? When you're when you're down like that, and I think you talked about how, you know, whether it's family, friends, teammates, whatever, it can help lift you, right? Right. But I always tell people like, hey, look, man, it's it's best to like just speak to someone because if you hold it in, if you hold it in for so long, eventually you're gonna you're gonna crack, and no telling what you're gonna do. Either you're gonna hurt someone, or you're gonna hurt yourself. So just it's best to just get it out. And then I promise, like it's gonna, it's, you you may feel a little awkward, but once you find like let all your emotions out, you'll feel better. By putting your story out there, has that made it, um, I guess, easier for teammates of yours, or even guys around the league, other players, to come to you, uh, maybe with similar experiences? You know, if they if they like understand my story, then they know that I could be I could easily relate to like what they're going to. So it's giving them, like a little comfort zone to like come come and talk to me or. Anybody else? I told I I tell people to talk to a therapist. Just talk to a therapist, cause it don't make you crazy. It don't. So hopefully, like that, just like open up the window for them, really like willing to do it. And, and for Jason, um, all this talk a few weeks ago, the bucks are fifty five plus million over the salary cap. Would you have imagined that you would be able to, you know, re-sign these guys, bring back Levante David, bring in a, a quarterback in Baker Mayfield? Um, I mean, just. Considering what you were up against, I know there were hard decisions that went into that. Just uh, what can you say about the job that, that your team has done in making this happen? Well, I could talk all day about how proud I am of you know the team that we have. Mike, Greenberg, Jackie, I mean the whole front office, John, everybody. We, we've been working on this plan for a long time. And like you said, there were really tough decisions. But I have a lot of confidence in these people. And... It was a lot of challenges, and we were able to get through it, um, kind of sort of coming through the back end of it now. But never once did we ever think that we were not going to be a good team this year. We have a lot of good players, players entering their prime, players in their prime, players that haven't even scratched the surface of their prime. Uh, it's the same situation that drew um, – Tom Brady to want to come sign here. It's a very similar team, and um, we're we're not done. We're going to have some more. We have to do a little bit, make a little bit more responsible or reasonable um, signings right now because of where we're at. But sometimes you get your best deals and you get your best players, um, uh, contributors from that. So, every these guys wanted to come back. They believe in the vision that we all have here with our coaches, with our front office, and uh, that's going to continue. Well, I don't want to say that I was 100% uh, confident that right. because, you know, you never know. Uh, I knew that everybody here 
is going to have some opportunities um, along with coming back here. So, but I was confident that uh, we would be able to put our best foot forward, and um, I was confident that that they wanted to be here. Um, I knew that, and because of you know the coaching staff that we have, the front office that we have, and the players that we have, like I said, it. Um, if I go back in time, I would do it all again. We um, we 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 pushed. We borrowed about a hundred million dollars against this year's cap and future cap um, to do what we did. Um, came close a second time, but you know, if anybody um, wants to criticize what they did, they can come to any of our three homes and look at our ring. So um, we're happy <laughs> about that. So and we're going to pursue another one too. So this is, this is confirmation, though. I think when these guys resign, it says, you know, it's, this is not about Tom Brady. This is about the organization. It's about what they know they can still do, right? I mean, so I mean, I know money's a big part of it. Jamal's not playing for free, and Anthony, but you know, for those guys to come back, they believe that yeah, they can win. it's it's a it's a great feeling. Um, you know, for all the challenges that we had going into this off season, um, yesterday, uh, today is a, is a great day um, to see that. You know, people still believe in the in the in the vision that we have, and uh, and the um, you know the ability that we have as a football team to still compete for this division. Jason, you talk about being confident in the players you have moving forward. You, you guys did have to move on from Donna Smith, from Shaq Mason, two starters on the offensive line. Um, you have a lot of young, versatile players that can step in. Are, are there any in particular that, that give you the confidence to be able to move on without those guys, and you can still have uh, the line you want to have in, in some combination next year? Uh, we have, yeah, we have a lot of confidence in um, Nick, uh, Brandon. I mean, um, uh, Robert. Um, we we have a. I think we have a lot of depth and players that can actually start um, for us. We're now we're going to continue to add there. We got the off season here. We've got the draft. We've got you know all the way up until our first game. So it, like, we're not playing in two weeks. So we have a lot of time to do it. But we have a lot of confidence in these guys. I think it, it, I don't think it'll be long. Yeah, I didn't mention. Uh, forgot we we got him back too. I didn't forget we had him back, but I for, forgot to mention him. We're very excited about Aaron too. And, and as you look at Luke, he was a guard for you. Was a tackle at the end. Do you have a sense for where you think of him being right now by default? Well, it's it's great that we think he can play both. Um, I, we're not making any decisions right now today. I think things can change in the matter of a couple days or a couple weeks, or we still got the draft coming up. But we're happy with the fact that we think that he can play both guard and tackle at a pretty high level. What about Tristan? Um, obviously, you know, all-pro right tackle. Has it been thought to moving him possibly or trying, you know, trying him out of the left tackle spot? Well, ever since we drafted Tristan, we've talked about that. So um, I think right now it's just talk. But we have the off season. We still have, you know, a lot of time here to see how this unfolds. Oh, I'll confirm. Yeah, we agreed to terms with yeah, Baker. Baker. Yeah. Baker goes, okay, I, yeah. I didn't want to um, step on any toes there if you guys are putting something out. Just what did you see in him and what made him an attractive option for you guys to sign at a spot that you didn't have a lot of, of cash available? Yeah, so we've always, all of us in the front office and uh, coaches as well, Todd, he's got a, he's got a, a history with Baker. Um, you know, competing against each other. Um, we've seen a, a, a fiery competitor, um, very confident, um, smart. He's got a very good arm. Um, he's had a lot of success. Um, you know, he took Cleveland to the playoffs. It's the first time since 94 when Coach Belichick was coaching. I mean, that says something. And, um, you know, we're excited to have him add him to the fray, and it's going to be a great competition. It's going to be, since I've been here, really the real first legit QB competition on uh, training camp and which will be a lot of fun to watch um, and it's going to make both of them better and I feel very confident about what Dave is going to do with the offense and with these quarterbacks. How very can, exciting. How can you push Kyle? Well he can push him because he's a old, both of them are great competitors. Uh, one's a little bit more outwardly competitive than the other. The other one is just as competitive just more of a, a, a quiet competitor a quiet uh, you know type of competitor, but they're both equally competitive. Jason, a couple more. If Brady hadn't come back from retirement last year, was, was Mayfield in play as an option for you guys looking at other options? 
this time a year ago? Um, I, yeah, you know, I can't answer that because uh, we've always we thought if when Tom made that decision that we would have to pivot and start looking, which we're always looking, but uh, can't answer that. We, we have a lot of confidence in Kyle. What do you make, too, of, of the, and, I, and we've talked before about, you know, how much credence you give to reports in the media, but it's like you talk to the folks in Cleveland, you talk to the folks in, in Carolina, you get very different kind of portrayals of, of who Baker Mayfield is as a person. Just what did you gather from him in, in your conversations with him and his representatives about who he is as a person? We, you know, we, we do our homework, um, and we actually didn't get that. We got the same from both from all places he's been and which is he's an awesome awesome person uh fiery competitor uh very smart and uh very driven and uh, a great teammate